kind of hedge funds, you know, high status uh, personality Ray Ray Dalio um, was recently reported as saying that an increase in interest rates in the US to around 4% would lead to the S&P 500 falling by 20%. Uh, I'm going to open this up to whoever wants to kind of take it on the panel, but is that, I mean, is that too gloomy or should we perhaps be prepared for more kind of more savagery in markets? Let me make a start. I mean, I haven't seen the exact statement of Ray Dalio, uh, whether he kind of refers to the Fed funds rate or rather the longer end of the the yield curve. The longer end of the yield curve is at around 4%, slightly below, but not, not far away, uh, certainly. Uh, and usually for the valuation of equity markets, the long end of the yield curve is is more important uh, because you, you discount long uh, long-run cash flows, uh, obviously. Now, I think what he's referring to is an experience we had uh, maybe in in the mid '70s when inflation was running high and um, central banks equally were fighting inflation, uh, rising raising interest rates, and uh, the impact of the market was much as as it was this year: discount rate rises, uh, equity uh, prices fall, PEs go down. Um, that is a scenario for a persistent high inflation and persistent high interest rates. Um, uh, and of course, if that would happen, there might be more pressure on, on equity markets uh, from, from that angle. Now, it's important to look back at the time also. We did, did a bit of a study there uh, looking on, on what happened in the mid-70s, which I was just born, actually, so I can't quite, quite remember from an from a, mm -hmm. uh, investment point of view, but, but uh, there are plenty of interesting books and, and data statistics out there. And you can see that in the 70s, uh, there was an initial boom in oil companies and uh, raw material companies. It's, it's kind of, there was a scenario, much like today, the um, Arabian countries, the OPEC countries, are having, having a boycott against the West uh, due to um, a war in the Middle East. Um, and that was, was sparking, uh, sparking that, that quick rise in, in energy prices at the time. It's somewhat similar to what we see today. Uh, and uh, however, later on, it was indeed the more capital light companies um, that did better during the period, kind of those that um, didn't have uh, a detrimental effect on their balance sheet. Because if you have an inflation, broad based, long range inflation, um, your, um, your uh, depreciation on the balance sheet is under underrating um, the replacement cost of your assets uh, a company has on, on its books. So there's a drain on cash flows um, that was happening then. Um, if we had that, kind of, I would look into the same scenario actually that asset light companies, uh, mostly in technology, consumer spaces, uh, would do better than asset heavy companies, much uh, to the contrary, what uh, conventional wisdom is that looks typically at asset, asset heavy companies in the energy space doing well. So we need to have this this, this in mind, but um, of course that's only due for uh, a persistent high inflation environment. And we have to see, uh, at least central banks are fighting inflation, are taking up the battle, uh, which is, is good news, uh, much as Chris said, um, uh, not ignoring the problem, but taking it head on and uh, bring it back under control is, is the right approach. So to, to stick with one more kind of macro point, Ben, I wanted to put to you, um, again, just this prospect of recession, looking at it from your, your again, your kind of broader perspective. It, I mean, are there any areas that you would expect um, to kind of fare better in a recessionary environment? And I suppose a trickier question, is there, is there anything that you see as being resilient in both the kind of inflationary environment, but also if things go south? Uh, well, uh, difficult one. I mean, as with all these things, there is a solution which is uh, to, well, it depends on your individual strategy, of course. There's lots of strategies. One solution is to find good companies that you can invest in the long term, buy them, and switch off your TV. Uh, you know, and, and try not to focus on these things. There is a good sense in not being drawn too much into the short-term volatility uh, and just trying to, to not not play the cycle. I think there are few uh, companies that I can, or few sort of styles of investing that I think would do well 
uh, sort of in a recession and if inflation uh, you know, that protects you against both. So a little bit of a barbell um, but potentially you can have, for example, energy, I think actually looks pretty uh, cheap at the moment. A lot of the, the oil and gas producers are, are actually at, at a fairly big discount. Now, obviously, oil's come off, but actually, even if it oil remains in the sort of 80 to 100 dollars a barrel range, and we've got areas like the US and probably others looking at that sort of level to top up, we know that the Chinese have a habit, a sensible habit of mass buying commodities when they dip to a level to build their strategic reserves. So I think even on a normalized basis, energy uh, looks a reasonable environment and that would help to protect against uh, any uh, exceptionally high inflation. Um, But as you head towards recession, it is those defensive areas I would generally expect to do quite well, staples, Mm. healthcare, utilities, et cetera. But the word of uh, of sort of caution I would put in, um, you need to remember, Markets are complicated. Trying to predict exactly what they will do is is not always a good idea. And and I could, you know, maybe we could talk later about the nature of risks and and the the fact it ties to the point earlier um, about selling on on, on good news, buying on bad. Mm-hmm. Investing, to my mind, is about embracing risk. And actually, it's when markets can place it and you have some of the some of the biggest mm-hmm. risks. But the other point that I, I sort of would caution people on there is a risk of seeing recession on the horizon and heading to cash and just de-investing too soon because you can make quite a lot of money just before a recession and just after it's the bit in the middle that is complicated and as we stand today markets are very worried inflation interest rates obviously reflected in some of the questions but just imagine this if um, inflation does peak in the next few months and everyone forecasts this recession um, at some point next year there will come a point when inflation appears to have peaked and appears to be trending down and central banks ease off and as a recession comes they will start cutting interest rates to start softening that blow Mm. and that is the potential a lot of people say ah recession money out could lose out on on, on a lot of that uptick so if you are trying to time the cycle i think remembering there is a point or hopefully there will be a point when we're not going inflation is rising higher interest rates choke it off there could be that sort of last hurrah environment so you know be nuanced be diversified be exposed to these different sectors mm. don't position 100 percent for here's a recession here's what's do what, what will do well because there's still a little while between between now and then 